Not long ago, BMW said electric vehicles were not the future. There was no consumer demand. In fact, they said that last year. Well, last week, they actually said the future of the car industry was hydrogen. But um, then yesterday, they said they're investing nearly $2 billion to build seven different electric cars in South Carolina. I'm not sure what BMW is up to, but hey, it's good to see more investment in EVs. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about BMW and their comments. The CEO, Oliver Zip, seems to be um, he seems to be almost as crazy as the CEO of Stellantis. Not quite, but nearly. So I think this is a really good investment on BMW's behalf. But let's be honest, let's be frank here. This was largely driven, in my view, from the US government's IRA and their sponsorship or their basically subsidizing American-made electric vehicles and battery production, which I've been saying for a while now, I believe, is a good thing. So BMW has announced a $1.7 billion electric vehicle investment in South Carolina, and they'll produce at least six different fully electric BMW X models at the plant in Spartanburg by 2030. What a cool name for a town, Spartanburg. I love it. Now, the BMW Group have announced two significant EV-related investments in South Carolina. In total, they're valued at $1.7 billion. Mark Kane from Inside of East says the first part is $1 billion, and that will prepare them for the production of electric vehicles at the company's existing manufacturing facility in South Carolina, Plant Spartanburg. The 30-year-old site currently produces 11 models. So basically, they're converting a gas mobile factory into an electric mobile factory. This really gives you a good idea of what it costs, right? To simply convert this production facility that produces 450,000 vehicles. We don't know how many of those vehicles they're going to turn into EVs. They haven't said yet the production numbers. But to convert it to some degree, they have to spend $1 billion on one existing factory. So it gives you a good idea on the kind of dollar figures involved here in going from gas vehicles to EVs. It's not that simple. It's not a matter of, oh, Toyota will just magically start using all their factories around the world to build EVs tomorrow. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of investment. So what are these models? Well, the 30-year-old site currently produces 11 models. Those include 5 X-Series. I have owned an X5 built from that plant, a BMW X5, and it's, it was a pretty good car, actually. Had its issues, but pretty good. Also, they build the X4, the X5, the X3, the X6, and the X7. They also build four BMW M models and two plug-in hybrid X models, the BMW X3, the xDrive 30e, and the X5 xDrive 45e, including battery pack assembly. I'm getting a bit confused here, but anyhow. Soon, an all-new hybrid electric BMW XM will join the lineup. My recommendation is don't buy that. Buy an EV. The plant capacity is up to 450,000 vehicles annually, and so far, more than 6 million vehicles have been built there. Nearly 70,000 electrified BMWs were built at the site in 2021 alone. Now, obviously, those were plug-in hybrids, so you can call them electrics. But uh, on this YouTube channel, I usually call fully electric vehicles BEVs. Plug-in hybrids, I call them plug-in hybrids. To support local electric vehicle production, though, BMW will invest an additional 700 million US dollars in a new high voltage battery assembly facility in Woodruff, South Carolina. This new plant will produce battery packs for the all electric BMW X models. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by high voltage factory. Sounds a bit dangerous to me. I'm not sure I'd want to be walking around in a high voltage factory. I'm assuming the battery voltage will be higher. We'll see though. One of the most important parts of the announcement is that the battery packs will be built using BMW's sixth generation battery cells, which are cylindrical, a standard diameter of 46 millimeters and two different heights, 95 millimeters and 121 millimeters. Now, the interesting thing is BMW have actually decided, all right, that their future batteries, the majority of their future battery production will be 4680 size battery cells. Sort of strange that um, they've gone down that route in my view, but that's what they've decided to do. I recently reported on that in a video saying that BMW had kind of copied Tesla there a bit. 
and they wish they have. BMW Group Chairman of the Board of Management, Oliver Zips, said, For decades, Plant Spartanburg has been a cornerstone of the global success of the BMW Group. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read all that to you because it's pretty boring. But I'm going to point out the fact that BMW, their number one market is still the United States. And it is a little bit scary for BMW when you think of what's happened to them in the US with Tesla taking a fair few of their sales and usurping them in the US very, very quickly. I mean, Tesla sells a lot more cars in the US now than BMW do. And it was once quite the opposite. In fact, not long ago. In fact, 18 months ago, it was the opposite to that. And then look at their sales in Germany. I mean, BMW delivered 15,000 vehicles in Germany in September. Tesla, 14,000. How long will it take before BMW takes that position? How long will it take before Tesla takes that position away from BMW in Germany as well? Now, obviously, this plant will help BMW in America significantly because the vehicles being built here will qualify for the U.S. electric vehicle incentives. And this is important. Oliver Zip said, our newly developed sixth generation battery cells, which were specifically designed for the next generation electric vehicles, will be sourced here in South Carolina, where the X goes electric. BMW Group's investments in South Carolina include the existing plant Spartanburg, $1 billion to transform part of the plant to build electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids. At least six fully electric BMW X models will be built by 2030 at that factory. Now, BMW haven't exactly outlined when. I mean, those six could be built. Um, they could all be built next year or they could all be built in 2029. We don't exactly know. The other $700 million is for the new high voltage battery assembly facility. That's in Woodruff, South Carolina, and the plant is actually near Plant Spartanburg. Another big announcement is that BMW Group has selected Envision AESC as its lithium ion battery cell supplier for plant Spartanburg. Under the partnership, Envision AESC will build a new gigafactory, a battery gigafactory in South Carolina with an output of up to 30 gigawatt hours annually. We don't know if all that battery production will be for BMW or not though. That's the equivalent to 300,000 vehicles with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack each. So that's quite a lot of vehicles. So South Carolina, whatever you're doing, well done. You've attracted three massive EV-related investments at one time. Now, obviously, you've been assisted pretty significantly by the government coming up with these IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, which has helped spur a huge amount of investment in the US within the space of three months, just billions upon billions of dollars. This means Envision AESC will join CATL and EVE Energy as the third supplier of newly developed round lithium ion battery cells for the BMW Group. So for those of you unaware, CATL is the biggest battery manufacturer in the world by a pretty large margin. CATL, EVE, and AESC will all build cylindrical type battery cells for BMW. So that's basically BMW is betting their entire future on those cells. So what's BMW's strategy over the next decade? While they're planning on having six plants, not themselves, but their partners, producing 20 gigawatt hours of battery manufacturing each, two of those will be in Europe, two will be in China, Two will be in North America. CATL will build one in China and one in Europe. So will EVE Energy, one in China and one in Europe. The fifth plant built by Envision AESC, 30 gigawatt hours instead of 20, will be, of course, in North America. Now, ironically, Nissan sales have been flagging. They've been collapsing in the US and in China. And Envision AESC was actually acquired by Envision Group a few years ago from Nissan which still holds about one fifth of the former joint venture, which was originally established with NEC. The company actually has a small battery plant right now in Tennessee and a new battery gigafactory underway in Kentucky. Envision AESC also has a battery factory in Japan, one in China and one in the UK. So what about this gigafactory in Kentucky? Well, a lot of you probably haven't heard of this, Envision AESC actually announced a $2 billion gigafactory in Kentucky, which will produce 40 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. Now, this was actually announced way back on the 16th of April, 2022. 
And the plant says it's going to produce enough vehicles for th more than 300,000 vehicles by 2027. Production at that factory will begin in 2025. So Envision AESC actually already has a small battery plant in the United States, which is located in Tennessee, and it supplies Nissan amongst others. This new battery plant, this $2 billion battery gigafactory, will supply a range of different automakers. And as far as we know, Nissan still holds a 20% stake in this venture. It's probably the only valuable thing Nissan has left. No, I'm exaggerating here, but hey, at least they still hold a percentage in this company. Now, the crazy thing is, this will mean Kentucky will have 116 gigawatt hours of battery production, 30 gigawatt hours from Envision ASC, which will be potentially increased to 40. So this could be 126 gigawatt hours of battery production. Then you've got an 86 gigawatt hour Blue Oval SK Innovation battery park, which is basically the joint venture between Ford and SK Innovation. That's a lot of batteries, 86 gigawatt hours. And that gives us the total there of 116 or 126 gigawatt hours, depending on how big Envision AEC go with this new gigafactory in Kentucky. So Envision AEC, what they want to do is they want to be actually be producing 300 gigawatt hours per year of batteries by 2026 worldwide. That would be a 20 fold increase on their current production. So that's a pretty optimistic number. Can they do it? No idea, but I'm liking what I'm seeing from the company right now. So here's Envision AEC's future and the future of BMW. Those companies really are quite tied together now. It's going to be interesting to see how they go and how their future success goes in the US. Hopefully it does really well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.